working my way through this obstacle course I call life. That's deep, that's real deep. When you're on a real life obstacle course, you're probably going to fail a few times. You might even fall down. And oh, that's why it's important to have resilience. Resilience is getting back up when something gets you down. It's good to get back up and keep going when life gets tough and things seem impossible and to demonstrate what that looks like, I'm going to challenge myself to one of the most difficult kinds of obstacle, obstacle courses. courses. The laser maze. Can you the lasers? I said, can you the lasers? Lasers are expensive. <laughs> okay. So we don't have lasers, but am I going to give up? No, I have Resilience! And I have something even better than lasers! Colorful string! <gasps> there! Now, my mission, if I choose to accept it, is to make it through this maze! Impossible, you say? Let's find out. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> You see, what makes a laser maze so hard is that you're not allowed to. Ah! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh! Shh, shh. You're not allowed to let the lasers touch you. Let's try this again, huh? <laughs> um, I seem uh, seem to have gotten myself into a tough spot. In today's story, we'll hear about when Peter and John got into a tough spot. Did they give up or keep going? Okay, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, fine. 
fine. Oh. Oh. Ah. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the Book of Acts, chapters 3 and 4. With the power of God's Spirit, the brand new church was growing and spreading like wildfire. One afternoon, Peter and John approached the temple at a very special time for prayer. So many people who need to hear the truth about Jesus. Peter and John neared one of the gates that led into the temple courtyard. Crowds streamed in and out, but only one man seemed to notice them. Spare a few coins? Peter and John glanced down and noticed a man lying on the mat behind the gate. Since he was born, the man had been unable to walk, and every day his friends carried him to the temple to beg for money. I have seen him before. Look at us. The man held out his hand. Please, I just need enough for a, a few bites of bread. I don't have any silver or gold. The man dropped his eyes. He had learned to pretend he didn't care when people rejected him. But I'll give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. The man looked up in shock. Surely Peter was mocking. But before he could withdraw his hand, Peter grasped it firmly. Wait! I, I, I... The man felt warmth and strength rushing into his body, down his legs, into his feet. Ooh, what's happening? Looking down, the man realized he was standing strong on his own two feet. How is this possible? The man took a step. I'm walking! <laughs> I, I'm walking! The man took a hop, a skip, and then he grabbed Peter's hand and John's, and he began to dance. L look at me! <laughs> I can walk! Uh, praise God! A crowd quickly gathered. What on earth is happening? Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? It's not as if we've made this man walk by our own power or godliness. Well, it kind of looks like that. The God of our fathers has done this. God has brought glory to Jesus who serves him. You handed Jesus over to be killed, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. This man was made strong because of faith in Jesus' name. Faith in Jesus has healed him completely. Well, I declare I don't even know which way is up anymore. Turn away from your sins. Turn to God. Then your sins will be wiped away. God sent Jesus to you to bless you. He wanted to turn each of you from your evil ways. Amen. All together now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hundreds gathered to listen to Peter and John, and many of them believed. But the religious leaders, dun dun dun, were not happy. Not happy? Oh, no. A thesaurus, please. We are furious, incensed, hacked, livid, enraged. The religious leaders sent guards to seize Peter and John and throw them in jail. The next morning, Annas, the high priest, and the other religious leaders gathered and met together. Bring out the prisoners. Peter and John were hauled out of their cells and brought to stand before the leaders, along with the man who could now walk. You got this. Peter and John must have looked common and scruffy in their simple robes, but they stood tall with their heads held high. By what power did you do this? And through whose name? God's spirit filled Peter, giving him the words to speak. Rulers and elders of the people, do you want to know why we were kind to a man who couldn't walk? Are you asking how he was healed? Please get to the point. Listen to this. You and all the people of Israel, you nailed Jesus to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. It is through Jesus' name that this man stands healed in front of you. 
Scripture says that Jesus is the stone you builders did not accept, but it has become the most important stone of all. You can't be saved by believing in anyone else. God has given people no other name under heaven that will save them. Ooh, snap! Take them away. We need a minute. The guards hustled Peter, John, and the man who could walk out of the room. How can they speak so boldly? They're just a couple of common fishermen, no training at all. Well, you can tell they've been with Jesus. Not helping. Come on, what do we do with these men? Everyone saw the miracle Peter did. We can't say it didn't happen. <sighs> we must stop them. No more. This ends here. Guards! The guards herded Peter and John back in before the leaders. We've had it. Up to here. You must never speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Or else. Or else what? <sighs> or else something. Which is right in God's point of view? Should we listen to you? Or should we listen to God? You be the judges. There's nothing else we can do. We have to speak about the things we've seen and heard. Oh, fiddlesticks! Look, just don't do it. The religious leaders couldn't quite figure out how to punish Peter and John, especially now since all the people were praising God for what had happened. Fine. Go. Just go? Leave. Amscray. Hit the bricks. Vamoose. Skidaddle. So the man who could walk danced his way home. And Peter and John returned to their friends. Instead of caving in when the road got hard, they relied on God's spirit to lift them up and keep going. And the new church quickly grew to over 5,000 new Jesus followers. When Peter and John got in trouble for talking about Jesus, they could have just given up gone home. But they didn't. Oh, ugh, they kept going. They were brave. They said, there's nothing else we can do. We have to speak about the things we've seen and heard. And think about this. Oh, <sighs> the reason you and I know about Jesus today is because people like Peter and John were brave enough to talk about him. <sighs> That's deep. Found it. Right on, right on. When things get tough for you, like when you're struggling with a subject at school, or when you're having trouble getting along with a friend or family member, you might be tempted to give up. <sighs> but that could be a big mistake. If you keep going, you could learn something you never knew before. You could build relationships that are stronger than they were before. You can make an impact in the world that you don't even realize. So. Don't give up too soon. There are a lot of good reasons to keep going. Here's the one thing to remember today. Keep going. Even when it gets tough, you're probably gonna make some mistakes along the way. <laughs> but it's worth it. <sighs> when you get to the other side. That was challenging. An even bigger challenge is cleaning all of this up. Or... Maybe it won't be so big after all. See you next time. Eek.